So I already have a video out about my initial thoughts on the Cali Audio LP6s. And if you wanna see a little bit more detail on how I think they compare to the Yamaha HS7s, which I was using before, um, that video is linked somewhere up top. I had been owning a set of Yamaha HS7s for six years or something like that. And they were amazing for me at the time. That was my first set of studio monitors. When I switched over to the Cali Audio LP6s, I was almost upset because I paid about $600 for my set of Yamaha HS7s. That was for three different speakers, one of them died. And then here comes this like $300 pair of speakers that in my opinion really blows them away. Except there was this little bit of a caveat that they had this kind of hiss thing. It really seemed like the consensus was, wow, these speakers look awesome. They sound really good. It's like the perfect studio monitor. Just this little noise thing is just a little irritant. And if they could have gotten rid of that, it would have been perfect. Well, they did. In 2021, Cali Audio came out with the LP6 version two. They look excellent. They sound just as great as the LP6s, but now that one thing that one thing is gone. So I guess now they're just perfect. And is that the only difference between them? When I first got the V2s, I was a little worried that maybe some kind of measures that were used to remove the noise would also change the sound quality in some way. And I was very happy to hear that that wasn't the case at all. It was really strange actually, because they were totally different speakers, but just no noise. And when I played some mixes I was familiar with, I'm like, they sound exactly the same. You can probably tell from my somewhat chaotic background, there's like a drill in one video and like a bunch of other crap. I'm in a living room pretty much with like a kitchen in the background. So part of me was like, do I really need this? Cause the noise floor in my room is already so high. I live in an apartment complex where there's noisy AC units. My fridge makes noise like for three quarters of the day. Would I even benefit from having the V2s if my the rest of my room is just gonna have some noise anyway? The answer is yes, definitely. I was A being between the V2s and the V1s. And again, despite the V1s, it's not like it's a deal breaker, but when it's side by side with the V2s, it's certainly noticeable and it's certainly an improvement and I don't wanna go back. <laughs> There's actually a lot of other small differences and some other interesting functionality differences that I wanna take a look at. The cone on the OG LP6 as it's referred to, not officially, it has a shiny woofer. You can see it kind of reflecting in the light there, but on the V2, they have this even cooler kind of a matte rougher look to it. I think it looks maybe slightly more modern or something like that. Also, you can tell the difference on the back. So this is, the back of this one, I could probably just film this later, but I'm just gonna struggle here. It says LP6 on it, cool, that's fine. On the V2s, it very much specifies second wave on the back, so you won't miss it. Under the hood, there are a couple of other differences that I don't think I see anybody else talking about, and we're gonna go ahead and talk about them here. Here's the IO that's going on right now. The Motu M4 is currently taking audio from the Mac Mini and sending it over to the LP6s just like normal. Then the remaining balanced output, which I believe in this case is gonna be the TRS of both speakers, is actually going back into the inputs of the Motu M4. Why would you do this? Well, somehow these almost act as an audio interface for you because they will actually just take that signal that's coming into them and redirect it into the inputs. This is useful if your audio interface does not have a loopback feature, but you do have remaining inputs because now you can actually use the LP6s as a little loopback. Random feature number two involves using multiple PCs. Here's the IO breakdown. As usual, Mac mini goes into M4, goes into speakers, down hiding under my desk is my gaming PC, and that is connected to my Focusrite Scarlet Solo, which I was using for a period of time. And the remaining balanced output of the LP6s are actually being used with the Focusrite as well. On the LP6 V1s, but in my experience, not on the V2s, you can actually have multiple simultaneous inputs set up so you can utilize multiple audio interfaces, multiple computers with the same set of monitors. 
pretty cool. I have a Mac and a PC set up right now and I thought that would be really useful. But on the secondary PC, I use the outputs from that audio interface to go into the main audio interface that's actually connected to the V2s. And then I just live input the monitor signal. That way I'm still hearing everything I need from the V2s and I won't be having to utilize the V1s just to have two different computers set up. A lot of work went into addressing noise issues on the V1s because I'm sure Kelly heard all kinds of crap about it for years. One of the reasons that it's kind of led up to having this input exclusivity thing is that just the way that the inputs were designed on the V1s can lead to ground loop issues, impedance issues, and other issues just leading to increased amounts of noise. With that said, if you've got some V1s, just know that even though you might have a higher noise floor thing going on, you also have some weird little features that the V2 people won't have if they're important to you at all. And if not, that's fine. So now I have three sets of studio monitors, which is very unnecessary because I really just want to use the V2s. I already liked the V1s more than the Yamaha HS7s, despite the noise things. The audio quality was just so much better to me. But if I was to rank my three sets of studio monitors, obviously the ranking is LP6 V2, then V1, then the Yamaha HS7s. There is one little small caveat left that now that they've got this noise issue, they have one more thing I realize that they need to fix. The power button is in such a weird spot. Come on guys. I'm just, I'm joking. But if you do want to make like a 10th anniversary edition after World War III or whatever, it would be cool if you could have like a little power button built into the Cali logo, like on the square, and then it would like light up. I'm just saying. Maybe that's tacky. Maybe that's like 10 years ago cool and not 10 years from now cool. But I'm just saying, it'd look cool, it'd be easier to press. If you enjoyed this video or found it helpful, please hit, smash, destroy, gently caress, massage, or whisper sweet nothings to that like button that helps me know that I did a good job. And let me know in the comments if there's any other gear, speakers, or other musical gear that you are excited for for this year, and if there's anything that you think the rest of us should be looking out for. I have been Matt. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.